Welcome in to First Strike here on Sports Money. Excited to share with you guys UFC Fight Night. Nahamunas Cortez, big battle out there in Denver. Hope everybody had a great 4th of July. A little time away from the UFC, but the Octagon can't wait. We're ready to get after it. Sub, how are we feeling about this card? Feeling great, man. Lots of moving pieces, but uh, I think the UFC gave us some uh, some really good matchmaking, and I think there's some spots to make money, so I'm excited. Fantastic. Jeff, how are we doing? Fantastic as well. Uh, looking forward to this card. They gave us 11 fights at elevation. I'm uh, hoping they all still maintain after the weigh-ins, and, uh, but there was a lot of mixing and matching going on, a lot of shuffling around, but we ended up with 11 here, so looking forward to hitting the bookies on Saturday. Without further ado, we've got two preliminary fight breakdowns and then the main event to share with you guys to get this early action and try to beat these line moves. Let's open it up. Let's get Jeff in the game here. We've got Montel Jackson. He's the number 24 ranked fighter with a 13 and 2 record. He's fighting on Damone Blackshear, number 48, who's also got himself a nice little record at 14, 6 and 1. Jeff, we see Montel got himself a little four fight win streak. Blackshear. Took a loss, but it was a quick turnaround fight. What are we going to see and how are we getting paid with this big prelim fight? This one's going to be a pretty exciting fight, in my opinion. We got a striker versus a grappler, but um, Blackshear's also been working on a stand-up game. So I think uh, I think he's going to be a little more competitive on his feet and try to stand on his feet a little bit longer than he typically does. It's a pretty even matchup. Both fighters are pretty uh, pretty or, uh, pretty uh, even on paper. Um, Jackson, uh, Jackson does have a three-inch reach advantage, which I think he's going to try to use to his advantage. But as I mentioned, uh, Blackshear has been working on his stand-up game. So I think they're going to stand and bang for a little while until uh, Blackshear might feel overwhelmed and uh, probably try to take it to the ground at some point. And uh, when he is on the ground, he is a superior ga uh, grappler. So I don't think uh, Jackson is going to be able to get up once he does get down and uh, down to the mat and on top. You know, Jackson, he likes to come out quick and uh, aggressive and if he's if he pops you right he's going to drop you to the ground and he's going to try to jump on top and and he will finish the fight if you're on your back early on he will do everything he can to, to take that fight over um Blackshear's coming off a, as you had mentioned a unanimous uh decision loss to Mario Batista last August but he he did take that fight on uh one or a one week uh notice uh so I, I'm I'm gonna roll with uh, Blackshear on this one. I I think he's gonna gonna get into uh, into a little bit of trouble on the feet just because he isn't as his experience. But then I think he's gonna take it to the ground. And uh, I'm gonna roll with Blackshear as the dog plus one twenty five on this one. Dog. All right. I like it, Jeff. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting matchup. There, it's gonna teach us a lot about both these guys, both of whom I'm pretty fond of. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this one take place. In the meantime, let's move on to the next one. Mike is going to break down the battle of Pennsylvania here. We got Fremd versus Petrosky. How are we getting paid, Mike? This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see which area of the state produces the real bangers out there. And I'm excited for this. Specifically, you look on paper, both these guys have come off of knockouts, recent fights. Uh, not all knockouts are created equal. And there's some things you have to think about when it comes to betting on fighters that just got that KO. Do they have the spaghetti legs? Are they wobbly? Are they still trying to second guess themselves so they don't catch that counter and eat it again? And uh, as I mentioned, you know, recent knockouts, we see Fran got himself a liver punch knockout by Ramon Kapalov. And prior to that was a big decision win for him versus Jamie Pickett. On the other side of things here, the Philadelphian Petrosky, you know, two knockouts in a row, two L's in a row. But I mentioned they're not all created equal. The guy darn near knocked himself out. He was winning that fight against Jacob Malkoon. What happens? Somehow he slams his head into the hip bone, gets himself wobbly, and knocks himself out. So, um, you know, that was a short notice fight. His follow up fight, rather, was a short notice fight. Um, just rolling back into it. So, we're in a spot where we've got these two fighters both trying to come back out there, get their wits and their legs back about them. My firm belief here is the best fighters do come out of Philadelphia. We've seen it on the regular. The question's going to be altitude. Do they start to gas out? When we look at Freem, he's a guy that has three fights that have not gone the distance as of late. And I wonder if 15 minutes is going to be just too much for these guys. I expect Petrosky to come out there, figure out a way to get this thing going, try to get back on the winning streak after those back-to-back -back knockouts. And ideally, we're going to see a spot where Freem's still trying to second guess. How the hell is it I got knocked out that last time? 
I think this is a great price for Petrovsky right now at minus 111. We don't have to get cute with it. Let's just take that minus 111. Let's get paid, and we'll move on to the next battle. I like that. Look, Mike, liking Petrovsky is here as well. Uh, good breakdown there. Sub is going to go back to the well. Coming off a 2-0 main event uh, strike last weekend, he's running back to the main event. Number nine, Thug Bros versus number 13, Tracy Cortez. Sup, what's your ticket looking like, and how are we cashing? Yeah, I love this fight here. Um, you know, Rose is a darling of the UFC and, um, you know, a huge fan favorite. She's had great moments. Everybody can re recall many of them. Um, I've liked Rose a lot throughout her career, but I think she is on the tail end. She's retired once, and I don't think she's that far off from a second retirement here. I think Tracy Cortez has a path to victory with her wrestling. Rose does not like wrestlers. Her recent fight with uh, Carla Esparza was a great example of this. Really trigger shy, barely threw anything over the course of that fight. And she's a little bit of a head case. She doesn't like adversity. So I think if Carla Esparza, uh, pardon me, Tracy Cortez can go out there and bank a couple rounds, I think she can go on to win a decision. And that's where I'm looking here. Uh, I played this one a little bit different than you might. I like the money line. I think it's far too wide. I think Tracy Cortez can win this fight. But what I did is I took the decision only. So if this fight ends inside the distance, your ticket voids, it pushes, you get your money back. But over at Rivers, plus 188 on Tracy Cortez decision only. There's a wide gap in uh, the decision rate for these two women. Uh, Tracy Cortez fights quite a lot of decisions. Um, she's had uh, nine fights go to decision. She's won all nine. Won seven decisions in a row and five straight in the UFC. Rose, on the other hand, just five and four in decisions. And I don't like how she's looked recently. You know, no, uh, no big shame in losing to Manon Fioro. But I didn't think she looked good in her win against Amanda Rivas. Uh, had a recent grappling match with Jillian Robinson. She gets choked out. I think Tracy Cortez can get this fight to the ground and bank minutes on top. So at plus 188, I really like that decision only on the underdog here. What a creative way to go and attack the card. You know, a decision only, kind of a unique bet that uh, should certainly help us get that plus money maximization. So really appreciate everybody rocking with us here. You'll see on the right, the recaps, Blackshear plus 125, Petrosky minus 111, and Sub bringing us home on the main card, Cortez decision only at plus 188. You already know the deal. Saturday night's going to be fire. We got the big live stream Saturday, July 13th. Prelim start at 7.15. Make sure you tune in at 7 p.m. And uh, we look forward to cashing with everybody. In the comments section below, besides hitting the thumbs up, share with us your favorite spots for this card. We'll make sure that we talk about those as we move forward for the big Saturday stream. And we'll see everybody there. Thanks for checking us out. Stay cashed.